Thank you for taking the time, making the time to be a part tonight. Well, we continue our study of the book of 1 Samuel. Tonight is 27, 28, and 29. We're going to seek to try to cover three chapters since they are short chapters, and we'll try to put it all together. And our theme is living among the Philistines. So everyone remembers that they wanted a king. God gave them a king. And the first king was Saul. Then, of course, Saul was rejected by God because of what he did. And us being, he sought to sacrifice when he was not a priest. Two is he didn't keep the commandment to destroy the Amalekites. And God did what? Rejected him. So he looked for another king, and the second is going to be, or is, David. That's what we talked about the last time, It's David. Now, how, how did God, God, 
How, what did he use in terms of an event? What did he use to help identify David, just like Saul? Was, we're going to get Goliath to certify it, but it's war. So they go to war. David comes out, takes a stand. Everybody remember? And the person to help solidify, because David was anointed privately, but he needed someone publicly. And that was Goliath. Now, again we study, after he killed Goliath, the women saying what? What did they say? David has killed his and Saul his. Which then, interpretation, is how Saul looked at it. So what was the question Saul in his mind? Oh, what else does he want? The kingdom? So jealousy set in. That's the picture. Because we got to get who to be king? David. So then he's setting the stage along the way. So now David begins to run from Saul. He could have done what? But he did. So his reasoning is, I will not put my hand. All right. Because he's going to either die in battle or God is going to what? Take it. But, he, but it won't be by. All right. So he's on the run from Saul. Now let's begin as we look at living among the Philistines. All right. So let's begin. Chapter 27, verse number 1. Brother Good, our reader, we are ready to begin. of Israel, so shall I escape out of his hand. Now, now what I want you to see, thank you there, in that, uh, let's go to verse 2 and we'll come back in a moment to verse 1. Continue. And David arose and he passed over with 600 men that were with him unto Achish, the son of Moak, king of Gath. So now, this is the Philistine. Everybody there? So we'll see something in a moment. Let's go back to verse 1 because I want you to hear the, his thinking. And we want to look at it from the perspective, who is the author of 1 Samuel? Let's go back to verse 1. And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. See, listen to him in his reason. His reason is, I'm going to do what? Word is, I'm going to die. die. By whose hand? Saul. Saul. Now, David is looking. He doesn't know the story. The story is, who is going to become king? He He's heard it. But the author who is writing is, giving, is telling you and I the story. If you remember the last study, when he met Nabal, who is called a naming fool, and David had helped his family, and the man wasn't willing to help David. His wife did what? Help David. What's the principle in the story? You're going to become, don't Walk in your destiny. I'm going to share that as a message. What is coming to David? Who is he going to be? King. Don't mess up being king by killing someone who has no sense. Are y'all getting the picture? David's mind is in his heart. He is going to one day kill me. Will Saul, could Saul kill David? No. As you said, what? No, I don't think That's right. Why? Huh? Why? Because God, because he's God's 
Say it again, my brother. I want you all to understand. Say it again. God had promised you are going to be king. And it doesn't matter who's against you. And I want you to get it. But David now is living in the moment you and I are reading it 2,000, 3,000 years later. What he sees, I understand, Saul's going to kill me. No, because guess who's with you? And if God is for you, Yes, sir. So that was the impression that he was under. Yes, sir. Everybody got the picture? Everybody understand? You all remember the story when Jesus goes to raise Lazarus from the grave? And he makes the statement. They said, you're going back to Judea. The last time you were there, they were going to kill you. And Jesus said, no one can do what? See, the, the point is, when God is for you or have for you, no one can stop it. You got to believe that. All right. Deep thought. Let's go down to verse 2. Verse 3, I believe. He's going to Gath. So let's bring up, if you don't mind, working on that, the land of Gath for us uh, so we can see the picture. Everybody got it. I'm going to work here for a moment since time is moving. See, he's going to get. There is Israel. Here is Philist, which would be Philistine. And I hope y'all are paying attention. You everybody see Gath? All right. This is where David goes, Gath, to the king of the Philistine to leave among them. And he's going to ask for a little town which is going at the bottom, Ziglag. Everybody got it? Now tell me, whose country is that today? Today is who lives there? See, it's Pal See, really, what you're looking at to grasp the geographical place, it is the land of... Hamas, which we'll talk about, Israel is fighting with Gaza today. We go back in history. Everybody remember, Abraham had a son, first son he had by whom? There you go. That's Ishmael. Then he has a son by Sarah, which would be then, everybody remember, Hagar had a son. And this is going to be their war between them. And the war is still going on. So God said, he's going to be a wild man. He's going to hate his brothers. Brother's going to hate him. They're going to fight. See, since we're talking how many years? 2,000 since 3,000. And this war will is still continue. You got to get history to understand the Bible. Well, we got it. So David is running from Saul. And his reasoning is, if I leave the land of Israel and go to Gath, then Saul will stop chasing me. This is his reasoning. So let's continue our study. All right. And David dwelt in Achish of Gat. Yes. And he and his men, every man with his household, even David with his two wives, <laughs> Ahinoam, the Jezreitess, and uh -huh. Abigail, the Camelitess, Nabar's wife. So then what was prevalent under the old law? Having two wives, what is that called? And everybody in here knows Everything, see, under the old law, polygamy was accepted by God. Why is Jesus coming? 
What is he going to restore that was God's plan from the very beginning? There you go. See, you find polygamy comes into view after sin, then they begin to have multiple wives. But you're finding Jesus in the Christian age is going to establish one man. Let's continue. And it was told Saul that David was fled to Gath. Yes. And he <laughs> sought no more again for him. There you go. See, he went to where? Gath. Saul stopped what? Because he'd been sinned all along. Why are you trying to kill me? Why look for a flea in a haystack? Okay, let's continue. And David said unto Kish, If I have now found grace in thy eyes, yes. let them give me a place in some town in their country that I may dwell there. For why should thou, servant, dwell in the royal city with thee? Yes, we'll come back to that in a moment. Thought, okay? Continue. Then Akish gave him Ziglag that day. Wherefore, Ziglag pertaineth unto the kings of Judah unto this day. Now, why do you think he wants another town to live in? <laughs> well, that's, that's the main picture to get away from Saul. But, but what do you think is his reason? Let's continue reading. Because what I want you to see is, see, David's going to live among them. But he's still what? What is his nationality yes why would a Jew live among the Philistines and why would he want to live with them what do we call folk who live among other folk and then gonna fight your folk what is that called you a traitor oh, y'all get in the picture you got to get what's going on in the story. So let's continue on. And the time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was a four year and four months. So what's our time frame? One year and he lived among them. Okay. And David and his men went up and invaded the Gerzites <laughs> and the Gersites yeah. and the Amakites. For well, all those nations were old inhabitants of the land, as thou goest to Shur, okay. even unto the land of Egypt. Okay, so you'll get the, as we saw on the map earlier. Now, I, I want you to grasp the, these are nations. You have to go all the way back to the time of Moses. When they inherit the promised land, God told them to do what for all those nations? To do what? To destroy all of those. But they did. And he said, I'm going to leave them for a snare to you. Because you didn't do it. So they are still in existence. And they become a what? So the Israel is always going to fight. Always going to fight. They're always fighting this, these people. Okay, let's continue. Well, if I, if I had the time, I'd tell you some of the movies y'all went to. It's in the book. Okay, but, but all right. And David smoked the land and left neither man nor woman alive and took away the sheep, the oxen, the donkeys, and the camels, and the pearl, and returned and came to Achish. So David did what? He destroyed women, men. Now y'all going to get the picture later on as we'll go through him. Why God said, David wants to build God a house later. And God says, no, because your hands are what? See, you're going to see all the blood shed by David. So he won't be able to build God's house. Stay with us there. And Akish said, Whether have ye made a road today? Now, this is King James, that's why you get a different version. In other words, what are you, where did you go to fight today? Who did you kill today? <laughs> Continue on. And David said, Against the south of Judah and against the south of Jehoramelites. Yes. And against the south of the Kenites. Yes. <laughs> and David saved neither man nor woman alive to bring tidings to Gath, saying, 
lest they should tell on us, saying, So did David, and so will be his manner all the while he dwelleth in the country of the Philistines. So what's the, what's the issue here? See, what does he say? David killed all the men, the women of all those nations. So what? So no one could say, could go back and tell. Because he's living among you can't live among the Philistines and kill their friends. Because if they tell it, then what is the king going to do to David? I mean, wait a minute. You came in, I gave you shelter, and you killing friends of mine? So David went, he destroys all these folk, and then he takes everybody, because the old saying is, you don't leave an enemy behind. So they couldn't tell nothing. Then he's going to come back, and, and the king is going to say, well, where'd you go to fight today? He's going to say, well, I went down south, and I just took care of all those folk down there. Yeah. Well, let's continue. <laughs> and Akish believed David, saying, <laughs> he had made his people Israel utterly to abhor him. Therefore, he shall be my servant forever. So what does Akish believe? David said, I went down south, I destroyed those. And the king said, yeah. You see, because I know your people hate you. Therefore, I don't have to worry about you attacking me. So I can use you as my servant. Y'all getting the picture? But who is with David? All right, let's continue on. We go to chapter 28. As we move through, verses 1 through 25. And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. Mm. And Achish said unto David, Know thou assuredly that thou shalt go out with me to battle, thou and thy men. So what did he ask David? You've been living with me? Amen. If David says no, are y'all getting the picture? Continue. And David said to Kish, Surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And Kish said unto David, Therefore would I make thee keeper of my head forever. So now you got to understand that from the King James. In other words, he says, Therefore will I make you my bodyguard. See, you're going to fight with me. And guess what? I know you can fight, so you'll be my personal. Got it? Continue. Now, listen, they're going to war. Who are they fighting? They're fighting Israel. What is David? So here, what do you think here, Dave getting ready to come to war, and his people sees? Well, wait a minute. Well, what are you doing over there when you over should be over here? Got it? Here we go. Let's look at the picture. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had laminated him and buried him in Ramah. Yes. Even in his own city. And Saul had put away those, those that had familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. What's a familiar spirit? What is a wizard? Say it again. Witches. Give me some more names. Fortune tellers. Suit says. Palm readers. Give me some more. Say what? A root woman. <laughs> A root woman. All right. Or see, familiar spirit of those who believe in zod in the zodiac side. Y'all getting? Saul had put all of them to death. So everyone in here know now, your horoscope is a sin if you follow that. Your horoscope does not determine how you act. Nor does the what? Stars, zodiac sign. Everybody in here ought to know that these false gods are in the Bible. Gemini. You got that? Apollos and Pollock. Saul was on the ship that had the sign of Gemini and Pollock. 
all of such you read. So when y'all go to the movies, who is the God of thunder in the movie? Thor, Thor is a Norwegian God from whom? Norway. He is, his father is Odin. Zeus is the Roman god, and he's called Jupiter. Zeus is Greek name, Jupiter in Roman mythology. He's head of all the gods. If you're in Egypt, he's called Ra, the sun god. No, y'all don't know all that, but y'all go to the movie and watch all of it. You got to understand, and the thing is, it's in the book. So Hollywood read the Bible too now. Yeah. Amen. So he puts away all the familiar spirit. Let's bring up a familiar spirit. Come on and see can we get that familiar spirit up for us to see as we have talked about such. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody ever gone? Don't raise your hand now. Okay. <laughs> and they play with a crystal ball. Are y'all getting that? How many of y'all played the game back in the day and it was called the what? Ouija board. And you would put your hand on the board, somebody else put their hand on the side, and that thing started moving. <laughs> hey Amen. I forgot everybody here is Christians. That's right, okay. Thank you, Brother Nash, making it look real. Brother Nash, oh, look at that. So he's going to see a familiar spirit. And guess what's going to happen? Let's go to our text. Samuel is dead. Everybody got it? So Saul is going because God has stopped talking to him. God has rejected him. He wants to know his history, what's going to happen. So he finds a familiar spirit whom he had put out the land. He's killed them all per se, except a few. Let's continue. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gibeah. 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 And when Saul saw that the host of the Philistines, he was afraid. Yes. And his heart greatly trembled. Why, did, why was he afraid? He's fighting the Philistines. So when he saw whom? When he saw the host of whom? Their number. He's out what? He was, and he thought in his heart, trembled. Continue. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the <laughs> Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Why didn't God answer him? Because God had done what? Rejected him as king. Because he wouldn't follow what God. Now he needs, and God doesn't answer. So God doesn't answer him by, neither by dreams, nor by prophets. Let's bring up the Urims. See, in the Old Testament, here it is. Thank you. You got it on the side. So in Leviticus 8.8, 8, he that places the breastplate, which will be your high priest, mm -hmm. on the top of his shoulders were these two objects. They are onyx stone, a white and a black. And God would talk, so they would light up. The high priest would consult, consult God. God would talk to him. Shall I go up and fight? And it would light. Now, we ain't got no urine, no thorum today, through them today. Ain't nobody got no rock trying to talk to God today because God doesn't talk through any what? No rock. Are y'all getting it? Nor by the Ark of the Covenant. He's not talking through dreams because he's given his word, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 8 through 12. He spoke at one time by things, but now he has only spoken through his son. 
hermeneutics, how we handle the word. So this would be the thing in his shoulders. And he's going to do what? Talk. So God doesn't say anything to him. And because God says nothing, let's go to our next verse. So this is the movement how you get Pentecostalism. And then you begin to teach that God is still speaking. Here we go. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that had a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that had a familiar spirit in Endor. Mm. And Saul disguised himself <laughs> and put on other raiments. Yes. And he went, and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. Yeah. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up, whom I shall name unto thee. And a woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest that Saul had done, how he had cut off those that had familiar spirits, mm. and the wizards yes. out of the land. Wherefore then liest thou a snare for my life, to cause me to die? Why are you asking me to do something when you know Saul has done what? Outlawed all those who do them. That's what she's asking. Continue. And Saul swear to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, <laughs> there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. So you remember Saul now is in the sky. Yes. Okay. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. Everybody listen. Because Hollywood and on television today, there are movies there are shows. One of them is Crossing Jordan. Meaning you can get in contact with the dead. Y'all do know that, right? I want to contact the dead. And they believe that they are capable of contacting the dead. Here we go. So who do you want to speak to? Samuel is dead. God isn't talking. So his best option, he said, well, find me a familiar spirit, a woman of divination, and she can bring up this dead person for me. There we go. And when the woman saw Samuel, she <laughs> cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. Guess who came up? She wasn't expecting who? She wasn't expecting for you to what? And guess who came? God brought him to life. Listen to his words to Saul. Continue reading. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God's ascending out of the earth. And he no, said, the God's is a little g. Everybody get it now? It's not capital. It's a little g. Okay? And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, <laughs> and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it is was that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. So here comes Samuel, and Saul did what? Continue. And Samuel said to Saul, <laughs> Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am so distressed. For the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me. And answer me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that I mayest make known unto me what, shall I, what I shall do. Okay. 
Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee, and is become thy enemy? Why did you call me when God have departed? You don't have to talk to me. Amen. When God is not talking to you, you don't need to call the preacher. You don't need to ask him. God ain't talking. <laughs> That's the last thing he said. I have rejected you as I'm done. Continue. And the Lord had done to him as he spake by, by me. Yeah. For the Lord had rent the kingdom out of thy hand and, give it, and given it to thy neighbor, even to David. See, God had taken it from whom? And he had given it. All right, get in the picture. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest his fierce wrath upon the Amalek, therefore had the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Why did God reject him? He's given a reason. You failed to obey his what? When it was time for you to go down and destroy the Amalekites, you gave a reason and brought back the king and the best of them. This is why God has what? So it's your disposition where you do not own your what? You're not accountable. To you. you don't understand accountability. He gave always an excuse. So what did Adam do in the garden? So when God came walking in the cool of the day, he said, Adam, where are you? Adam said, he said, did you eat of that fruit? And he said, that woman you gave me. Who did he blame? First he blamed God. If you hadn't given me that woman, I wouldn't have eaten of the fruit. But she gave it and I ate it. Wait a minute. You didn't have to eat it because she ate it. So what did he do? He made an excuse he blamed. So this is the blame game. So we go through. Here we go. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver <laughs> Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines. And tomorrow shall thou and thy sons be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Brother Good, I need for you to read it again. Then we're going to put it in modern day vernacular. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel into with thee into the hand of the Philistines. You all going to lose the battle. That's one. Number two. And tomorrow shall thou and thy <laughs> sons be with me. I am dead. Tomorrow, you all going to be dead. You get what? <laughs> That's tough. When you just got your what? Your death time. And you seeking for some good news, and God says, tomorrow, you and your son, y'all all going to be dead, and you're going into what? Captivity. Here's the picture. Okay, let's continue. Then Saul fell straightway all along on the earth, and was so afraid because of the words of Samuel. Mm. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all day, nor all the night. Yes. And the woman came unto Saul <laughs> and saw that he was so troubled and said unto him, Behold, thy handmaiden had obeyed thy voice. Yes, right. And I have put, put my on. life in, thy, in my hand and have hearkened unto thy words which thou spakest unto me. Yes. Now, now therefore, I pray thee, Hearken thou also unto the voice of thy handmaid, and let me set a morsel of bread before thee, yes. and eat, that thou mayest have strength when thou goest on thy way. Because he was what? He's disheartened. He has no strength. He hasn't eaten all day and all night, and the word came, you're going to be with us tomorrow, with me rather, and all of Israel is going into what? You're going to die. Okay. But he refused and said, I would not eat. But his servants, together with the woman, compelled him 
and he hearkened unto their voice. So he arose from the earth and sat upon the bed. Yes. And the woman had a fat calf in the house <laughs> and hasted and killed it and took flour and kneeled it and did bake unleavened, unleavened bread. bread thereof. Yes. Unleavened means no yeast in the bread. Matter of fact, that's what we have for what? Okay. And she brought it under before Saul and before his servants, and they did eat. Then they rose up and went away that night. He got his answer. Yeah. Can you bring up then the woman one more time? The familiar spirit. And let's talk about it for a moment. Here it is. So can you see? Saul, Saul said, bring up David. I mean, bring up Samuel. She goes and she does what? Ultimately, she has no power. Everybody got it? But God does what? He, he allows Samuel to. So can't you see? So all of a sudden, here it is in the crystal ball, and guess who comes? And it scares who? It scares her. Boom! What? what? You get the picture? Now, anybody ever been to Las Vegas? When you go to Las Vegas, guess who you see? Not just Las Vegas, but anywhere. You'll find, you'll find a crystal ball. Amen. See, what's the danger now if you ever go to one of them and they say, give me your hand, brother. Look at him. I got him right now. He don't even know it. <laughs> He's been going right. I'm going right with him. And they tell you something, and the thing comes true. Where will your faith be? See, if you're not careful, there are people who are gifted. Do y'all know it was one of the faith preachers who had members wired in the church? Oh, I remember that. They got, they Pollock. Mm-hmm. And still got people, and he would say, oh, I can feel it right now. There's someone in this audience who need me. They are saying right now they need God. I know who you are. You ain't got it, but someone going to touch you. He'll have all his people who work with him in the ear. And they say, she came in having filled out. She needs prayer struggling with her leg. And they come. God is touching, calling you. Yeah, he with a blue of sweat on right now. He needs Jesus. And move people. Are y'all getting the picture? They had him on, well, I believe it was 60 minutes. Telling the whole story about it. Masters of deception. And still got followers today. So you start to see that because if you experience it, Something may happen, and your faith will start leaning. And here it is. I know what I saw. But we do not walk by. You walk by. How does faith come? Romans 10 what? Faith come by hearing, and hearing comes by not what you see, because sight can deceive you. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, Sister Rupert and I went to a magic show down in Orlando. Man, it was the best magic show I ever been to. The man pulled out. He said, now here's a quarter, and I'm going to make this quarter float. And you know no quarter can float. He dropped it, and the quarter stayed in the mist, middle of the air and turned. I'm like, I need to go up and see, because i got to build strength. Are y'all getting the picture? It's magic that is not true. And then after it was over, he talked about how it was done. Are y'all following me? Your eyes 
and deceive you. See, in order for metal to float, for a ship to float of metal, for a plane to fly, that's called science. But if you can make metal, no science, for something to go up and stay up, that's a miracle. And what three things constitute a miracle? It has to be instantaneous, so it violates time. What's the next one? It violates natural law, because what goes up? It would have to violate the law of gravity. That's why you and I stay on Earth, because gravity keeps you up. So if you go high enough, by 225 miles up in the air, you hit out of that area, and you go into space. And space is what? It's on gravity. What's the third? There's no human logic. You can figure it out. So it doesn't make sense. That is what a mi makes a miracle. So you are not a miracle. I'm not a miracle. Why? Because it took you to get here. So that time was involved. So it's not a what? Now, tell me what a miracle was. You see, when, when Adam was created, that was a, because he was created full grown. When Jesus was born, that was a, how? There you go. Everybody got the picture? Understanding the gospel, why do we believe in Christianity? Why is Jesus called the Christ? He is God. He was God in the flesh. Why? Because his, even his birth was a miracle. But at the same time, it was human, so he's the God man. All right, well, we got that part up. Let's hit verse 11 right quick. I mean, chapter 29, we're going to finish right quick. Verse number 1. Moving right along, let's complete it. Now the Philistines gathered together all their armies at Apex. Yes. And the Israelites pitched by a fountain which is in Jezreel. Yes. And the lords of the Philistines passed on by <laughs> hundreds yes. and by thousands. But David and his men passed on in the rear reward of Akish. So they were in the what? They in the back. All right. Yeah. Then said the princes of the Philistines, <laughs> What do these Hebrews what do these Hebrews hit there? Here. Yes. And Akish said unto the princes of the Philistines, Is not this David, the servant of Saul, the king of Israel, which <laughs> have been with me these days oh. or these years, and I have found no fault in him since he fell unto me unto this day? So what he they asked, here are the other. I ain't got time to go in that part, but, but if you'll notice now, here are the five lords of the Philistine, and they say, why is he with us? And they're going to say something to the king. He shouldn't be traveling with us because he just may turn on us. Continue. And the princes of the Philistines were wroth with him. And the princes of the Philistines said unto him, Make this fellow return, <laughs> that he may go again to his place, which thou hast appointed him, and let him not go down with us to battle, lest in the battle he be an adversary to us. For wherewith shall he, should he reconcile himself unto his masters? Yes. Should it not be with the heads of these men? Yeah. Is not this David... Oh. Of whom they sang one <laughs> to another and dances, saying, Saul slew his thousands and David, and David his ten thousand. Why would we have this guy yeah. in our backs? Yeah. Do you know who he is? Uh -huh. He killed how many? Yeah. It would be good to have him on our side, but we don't need to go to war with him. Continue. <laughs> then a kiss called David and said unto him, Yeah, yeah. Surely, as the Lord liveth, thou hast been upright, and thou going out, and thou coming in with me in the host 
is good in my sight. Yeah. For I have not found evil, evil. in thee since the day of thy coming unto me unto this day. Yeah. Nevertheless, the Lord's favored thee not. They didn't want David fighting. Continue with them. Wherefore now return and go in peace, that thou displease not the lords of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And David said unto Kish, But what have I done? <laughs> and what hast thou found in thy servant so long as I have been with thee unto this day, that I may not go fight against the enemies of my lord the king? Listen to David. But what have I done? I tell you what you've done. You killed all them southern folk, but you didn't tell me that. Right. Are y'all getting the picture? See, David didn't tell him all that. Right. But the lords are saying, no, he can't go with us. Continue. And Akish answered okay. and said to David, I know that thou art good in my sight as an <laughs> angel of God. Notwithstanding, the princes of the Philistines have said, he shall not go up with us to the battle. Wherefore, now rise up early in the morning with thy master's servant that are come with thee, and as soon as ye be up early in the morning and, and have light, depart. So David and his men rose up early to depart in the morning to return into the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines went up to Jezreel. Mm. What do you think? Why? What? What's the bottom line? See, David didn't go with him to battle. He didn't even have to face his what? His own people. What do you think the message is? God is still there. God is still in this uh, situation. He's still here doing what he, what he will. Mm -hmm. Amen. And one else adding to it. What do you think the message? He said God is in the picture. Does God protect David? Yes. David... See, he's fighting his enemies or others, right. but he's with living in the land of the Philistine, right. and now he's about to go to war against his own folk. Mm -hmm. But God is still in the picture. Mm -hmm. And that's what you see, because if God is for you, who can be in Gisha? And thus we'll see as we'll go further on, David is going to become king. A Man, that is our picture. We're going through, and we're going to look even the next time to complete our task. Chapter 30, I believe it is, right? And we'll be getting ready to close out 1 Samuel. So we start with 2 Samuel. David becomes king. Now David is going to begin his reign, which had been prophesied by Samuel. Now he's going to become king. Amen. So then, as we study the word of God together, and I hope down the road we begin to pull up some of these things and learn more about the kingdom all the way the church in the Old Testament coming to life in the New Testament, the coming of Jesus the Christ. If you're here tonight, I'm going to ask my brother to give us a song. And, of course, if you're not a member of the body of Christ, it's hearing the gospel and believing it. Repent of your sin, confessing the sweetest name and being baptized so all sins can be washed away. If you stand in need of prayer, we're going to stand at this time. So please sing, and if you need to come. Where could I go? Where could I go? You know I see where I'll refuge for my soul.
at this time and close out in a word of prayer. Brother Jones, would you bless us, sir, in a word of prayer? Hold one second as we're coming. Yes, ma'am. coming up this Sunday, African government will have our movie as well regarding that. And make sure if you haven't signed up, to sign up for the lunch. Our prayer this time. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I'll come. I'm sorry. I'm up here now. Go ahead, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you again for bringing us together tonight to study your word. I pray that we continue to uh, grow through the learning of your word and spread your word out to the world. Yes, sir. I pray that you continue to bless us and keep us and allow us to leave this place safely and return back at the next yeah. point in time. Yeah. Lord, I pray for those who have come to, uh, who requested prayer for those who have experienced uh you know, hardships, accidents, you, or the bereaved, those who are suffering the loss of loved ones. Yes. And just pray that they look to you for strength, Lord, knowing that you can heal all things. Yes. I just pray that you continue to believe us, uh, be with us, and bless us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being a part. Bond, encourage, love, sisterhood. Join us for our monthly Lady Soul Talk every fourth Friday night of the month at the Central Church of Christ, beginning at 6.30. Ladies, let's get together to strengthen our relationship with God and with one another. We'll encourage each other through meditating on scriptures that we should apply to our daily lives. We hope to fellowship with you at our next Lady Soul Talk. See you there. The next event is Sunday, February the 25th. Worship with us and then stick around for lunch and to watch the movie, Something the Lord Made. Each week, Central meets for Sunday school at 9 a.m., followed by worship service at 10.30. We'd love for you to join us, so stop on by. Greetings church family. On behalf of the health ministry, I wanted to provide a few tips to keep us all safe and healthy during this flu and cold season, especially with the COVID cases rising. Here are a few precautions. Get vaccinated against COVID-19 and the flu as vaccines are made available. Consume a well-balanced diet of fresh fruits and vegetables. Manage chronic diseases and conditions. Cover your mouth and nose when you cough or sneeze, but never use your hands. Instead, cough or sneeze into a tissue or your elbow. Always throw the tissue in the trash and immediately wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with soap and water. This is one of the most effective ways to prevent spreading germs and getting sick. Of course, if soap and water are not available, use alcohol-based hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol to clean your hands. Please continue to monitor your symptoms, and if you don't feel well, stay home and keep your distance from others. Additionally, you should follow up with your primary care provider for further guidance. Wear a mask while in large crowds where there is an increased risk of encountering germs. And when in doubt, Get checked out. Make sure you seek health care when you have any questionable signs and symptoms. Please take care of yourself and others. Thank you.
taken by the love of Christ. I made a vow to give him my life. At the potter's table, on the potter's wheel, mold and shape me, Lord, that I may be filled and live in memory. What you did for me, for me, oh yeah, how you set me free, set me free, set me free, at the dark Calvary. So, a one that is ready, one that's ready. I want to be used by you. I want to be, I want to be a worthy vessel. Lord, I want to do, do, do just what, what you, you want, want me to teach me and show me do, do, truly do, how to love. Do, do, just like that sacrifice do, do, from heaven above. Do, do, Perfect union had never been broken. Stronger words had never been spoken from you. It is finished. Teach me how to finish. Truly love. A copy love from heaven above. What a living memory. I want to live. You set me free. What you did you set me free. Heavenly. 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 I want to be. be. I want to be a worthy vessel. Want to be you. To be used by you. I want to be. I want to be a worthy vessel. I want to do. One that's ready to be used by you.